Alrighty, so I'm just gonna repeat uh, the steps over really quickly. So first thing you're gonna do is when you get to your chart, you are gonna go to the daily time frame. And for um, William, I know you said you don't have TradingView on your phone, but make sure you download TradingView. You can also mark up on MetaTrader, but I'm gonna show you how to do it on TradingView and, and MetaTrader, okay? Alrighty. All right, so first you're gonna go to the daily time frame, and on the daily time frame, that is where you are going to draw your support and your resistance zones. Okay, your support resistance zones will be marked on the daily time frame. So pretty much what you want to do is determine where price is currently at. So we see prices here. So we want a zone that's above that and we want a zone that's below price. Make sense? Yes. All right. So since I've been doing this, I can spot these with my eyes very well. And that's what we're going to be practicing together, marking our support and resistance zones. So. I usually draw like a little horizontal ray. We got a little, a lot of, a couple areas. So reason why this, um, let me change the color of this. The reason why this is considered a great area of, of resistance is because price came to this line multiple times and reversed. So pretty much price came here and reversed, meaning it, it was going up and then it dropped. Uh, price came here in reverse. You see, it was going up, it came here, then it dropped. Uh, price came here again in reverse, meaning it was going up, came to this line, and dropped. And then price came here. So the more that price does that, the better your line is. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six times. This is a really good line, a good, good resistance area. So does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Okay. The resistance is on the top and the support is on the floor. Yeah, but they're interchangeable because when price breaks this, it'll become it'll turn support. But when it comes to a situation like this, this is considered resistance, yeah. When it turns into so okay, okay. All right. All right. So now this is your resistance here, and now we're gonna find our support, okay? So now we look at where price is currently at, and we're gonna try to find an area of support. There's there's a little bit more. Yeah, let's come down here some. There's still a little bit more areas of, okay, this is not bad at all. This is a pretty big zone though, the GBB page. But this is a nice area of support, and do you guys see why it's a nice area of support? Anybody can answer. This is how we learn and earn. Anybody want to make a guess as to why this is a good area of support? Because it's just below, right? Like right where the line is kind of dropping at. It dropped there a few times. So, yeah, price, this is a good area of support because price came to this line multiple times in reverse. That's what makes support and resistance. The amount of times price came to that specific area in reverse. Oops, why did that just have to get the wrong thing? Price was coming down, came here, then went back up. Price came back down, went here, came back up. It broke here, but that's okay. Price came here. Let me remove this so it doesn't keep going up. Price came here. So pretty much price looks like it's on its way down to our support, right? Guys? Yes, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so does, it looks like price is coming down to our support, right? Yes. So when price is coming to our su support, what do we think that the market is going to do? Going to bounce back up. Awesome. I change. We're expecting the market to go back up because this is our zone. Price has been bouncing in between these zones. So when price comes to our support, we're looking to buy it back to our resistance. When price comes to our resistance, we're looking to back buy we're looking to sell it back down to our support. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you would do is Remember, what's the first step that we did for today? Because I want you to reiterate this stuff so that I know you're actually retaining the information. Start at a high time frame. Okay. Yeah. 
so daily. How, you guys get how, oh, I'm sorry. William, you were saying something. The can you show can you show me where the daily time time frame is at? Daily time frame is right here. When we do it on your phone, we're gonna go through this. So it's right here. Okay. So um this first step is go to the daily time frame. What's the next step? Determine where price is. Okay. And then from there. Mark support resistance zone. Awesome. Now you mark your support resistance zone. Now that we have our support and resistance zones marked up, we are going to go down a, a time frame lower. So from the daily, we're now going to go to the four hour time frame. So that's the next step. Okay. We're going to go down to the four hour time frame. Once we go down to the four hour time frame, this is now where we're going to start drawing our trend line. We're going to determine the trend of the market. So right now, what type of trend do you see that we are in? Make a, it's okay you, if you, you get this wrong. Just tell me what you see with your eyes right now. What type of trend are you seeing? Um, I'm seeing bearish, so a okay. sale maybe. You say you're seeing a bearish trend? Okay. Well, I guess you can say bullish because there's a big buy right there. No, you don't have to change your answer. Just <laughs> say you see a bearish trend, so we're going to go with the bearish trend. So if you, oops, I didn't mean to move that. So yeah, here's a nice little bearish trend. This is not technically a trend line because what makes a trend line is two valid touches. So two um, wick touches makes a valid trend line. And right now this is only two touches. You can probably bring it down. Let me see if, it, if I bring it down a bit because you can't force a trend line. Oops, let me move this. All right, that's better. Perfect. Awesome. And then I see the bullish that you were talking about also because if you saw both of these, it would still, it would still have been right. <clears throat> regardless of what you saw, you could draw two trend lines because just like Abel, you want to trap price as much as possible. Make sense? Yeah. So she saw the bearish trend going down and she also could see this bullish trend. So if you see both of them, it's okay. You could draw both trend lines. So now we've drawn our, on the four hour, we're determining the trend and drawing our trend line. So write that on your notes. On the four hour, we're determining the trend and drawing our trend line. So now from the four hour, after you get your trend line, you draw your trend lines out, you would then drop down to the one hour time frame. All right, one hour time frame. Yes. So from here on the one hour time frame, you want to do two things you want to draw a counter trend line so right now the goal is to trap price as much as possible so that you can determine what your next move is going to be so pretty much i see now that i'm on the one hour i could really really see the trend that happened right here right you're going to want to draw a counter trend line so i just try to trap price as much as possible because the more you trap price, the better you'll be able to actually get a nice little um, a nice little entry or a nice way of knowing which way the market is going to go. So from here, now that you've got your trend lines trapped, you can do different colors if that's what helps you. Now you're able to really say to yourself, you got your support here, you got your resistance here. Now this is where you're going to be able to say, this is when I know when to get in, a tr in the trade. You are going to get into the trade if price breaks above this trend line, what would you do? Buy. Yes. Awesome. So you would buy this up until you either until here, because you know that price can come here and then drop. And then, or you know that if price breaks this trend line, what are we doing? Sell. So. Awesome. So love. Yeah. Awesome. So when you sell this, you're only going to want to sell it to your support because we know that when price gets to our support, we're pretty much going to start looking for buys for it to go all the way back up. So let me see how many pips this is. Oh, that's a lot of pips. That's awesome. 100 pips. Okay, so now 
Chal, can you do that out there? Wow. Oh, okay. So now how you how this is gonna work and how this how this how you are able to really determine this now is that you would be marking your charts up, for example, say on a, any day, any random day. Usually I mark my charts up on Sunday. So you see how the market is not open yet, and we're not going to want to just be staring at our computers and staring at our screen to know when price actually breaks above the trend line or below the trend line. So we're going to set alerts. So there's an app called Call Levels. I just use TradingView, but you have to pay for that if you want to get alerts on TradingView. But I use an app called Call Levels if you don't have the paid version. It's called Call Levels. Download it on your phone now, and you'll be able to put in an alert. So, for example, I would put an alert. Let me move this up. Uh, this this line i would put two alerts here i would put an alert somewhere above the trend line here okay my alerts created so i have an alert set there and then i would put an alert somewhere below the trend line here create alert awesome so my alert is set so oh goodness what did i do i pressed the button didn't i okay well i don't even remember what pair i was looking at Oh, I hope it's saved. It was uh, I got it. the British. Oh, all right. All right. So this is where I would send an alert. So when I'm going about my day, when I'm talking to people, when I'm doing all my other stuff the other day, I'm at the store, I'm doing anything. I am not staring at my chart because I will get an alert when price gets to this point. Does that make sense? Yeah. But this would be nice. If it decides to break this trend line and go up to this one, that's a nice 150 pips. Lovely. Beautiful. All right. So that is pretty much how you trade. You just you wait for the break of trend lines. You just have to trap price as much as possible. Draw out your support and resistance so you know where to set your take profits and your, your take profits. But um, so pretty much if the, pri if the market decided to uh, come out of this here and it hit my alert, I would wait for the candle to close. This is the one hour time frame. It usually tells you how long it's been. But on the one hour, you usually know because it's only an hour. And I'd wait for the candle to close and then I'd get in for my buy. And my take profit would be right here. And then I would have my take profit set here. And then when price breaks above this trend line again, I would buy that up into my resistance. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right. So now I want you to, I want you all to, uh, to mark up a chart using those rules. So the first rule was, remember, we start on the daily time frame. draw your support and resistance on the daily. Um, once you determine your price and then you're going to drop down to the four hour and determine your trend and draw your trend line and then from the on the one hour after that you're going to draw a counter trend line so it's just a smaller trend line so that you know where to get in at the break of the trade so then your last step would be get into the trade if it breaks in when it breaks your trend line in either direction to the upside or the downside so does that make sense Yes. But how would you do it on your phone? Are you going to go through that next? No, I'm going to make you guys do it. So I want you, if you're going to be using your phone, you could try it on your phone. I want you guys to try on your phone and your computer. So um, who wants to do the, be the first volunteer? I stopped sharing my screen now so that we can do this all together because we got to get it done. And the Zoom only allows me 45 minutes, so I want to get through it so that we can really all get through both on the phone and the computer. <clears throat> so, William, you want to go because you're on your phone? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay, so do you have an Android or an, an iPhone? I have an Android. Okay, so on your Zoom, if you click your screen and you see that share button, it's green, it says share right in the middle. Yeah. Click that share button and then it should say screen. Do you see screen? Yes. Click screen and then it should start sharing your screen. Let me know if it says anything. It says start now. Let me let me grab my little uh my little pen that goes on my phone so it's easier for me to mark my chart. Hold on real quick.
And then I'm ready to go after William. Okay. I don't want to, it to take too long because we only have 40 minutes on the Zoom. It doesn't tell me how much time I have until it, uh, until there's 10 minutes left. Hello? Yeah. All right, I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't see your screen. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into it right now. I'm allowing permission and all that other good stuff. Okay. I just want to go. All right, now I see it. So go to your MediTrader app. Okay. Um, You could take that RSI off. So, ooh, Android's a little different than iPhone. So I'd be a little confused sometimes. Curly is really good at helping me with this. Okay, perfect. This is the stat. That's what you need. So go back to that. Click on, let's try the F. Click on that F. You said the S. Click on F. F. Okay, move that relative strength indicator. So go to the top right and click that garbage can. And remove all that moving average and relative strength index. Okay. Nice. And then you can change your, your um, let's do this really quickly. You can change your color candles and if you want to. I don't know if you want to. It's, it's okay for right now. It's okay. okay. So rotate your screen. Okay. So now, what's the first step? The first step, hold on. I believe it's the... The, the, the daily time frame, which is the time frame. So I want to set this to an hour. No, da daily one, D1, right? Why do you have all those things up? Okay, go to, um, go to your settings really quickly. I don't know why your meditator has all that stuff. Um, no, yeah, that's what I needed, that little screen. Rotate your screen back to normal. Go to the top left where those lines are and go to settings and uh, take off that OHLC, uh, OHLC, uh, Show take off show period separators. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Okay, now go back to that chart. You're on your USD and rotate your screen back. Okay, awesome. So now you're gonna wanna draw your support. Make sure to remove that red line there. Click it, hold it down and press delete. The red line? Mm hmm The red and the blue line. Oh, I don't think you can move it. You probably have that setting on. I think that's one of the settings because it's going to confuse you. Go back to your settings really quickly. I think it's the trade levels. Show trade levels. Nope, that's not it. Go back to your settings. Just take all those off. I don't know why any of them are clicked on in the first place. Okay, that's good. No, leave that on. I only wanted you to take the stuff off the charts. Okay. Okay, great. Awesome. So now you're going to draw your What? Okay, now you tell me what the next step is. Oh, to mark the support and resistance zone. Okay, so in order to get that, click on your screen. Oh, I really want you to change those background grids. That's okay. Click on your screen and where you see the shapes is where you get all your trend lines and all that stuff is on the right hand side. The, At the bottom? No, the shapes. Oh, okay. And you would use your horizontal line. So now 
put your horizontal line on to screen tap anywhere and now you would mark your support and resistance so tell you just draw where you think that you see your support and resistance so you would determine where price is first right yeah price prices uh, i'll say prices like like right around around the one Price is where your blue line is at. Price is where your blue line is at. That's where your price is currently at. The market's closed, so that's where price is currently at. Okay. So now you want to draw your support and resistance zone based off of where price is. So you're always going to want one above, and you're always going to want one below. But you have to make sure there is support and resistance zone. So move your line to where you think is a good support and resistance zone. <laughs> I don't know why this the line's not popping up. Yeah, click the line, click it, click the red line, and then move it. Oh, oh, okay. All right. So well, that's where price is at, I'll say. Okay, now you're gonna want to draw your support. So get another line. Click the screen and go back to your shapes. Press add at the top right. Okay. And yeah, you're probably gonna want to download TradingView because on MetaTrader, it's you'll see. Let's see if it does, if it goes through. Okay. And then also you can scroll to your left to see if price comes to that line again, like all the way past to see, and it'll give you, no, keep going. Yeah, keep going. As many times as touch line touches, keep going. Perfect. So yeah, that's an, you don't have to go so fast so we can see it, but you'll be able to see where price came to that line multiple times and dropped or price came to that time multiple lines and went back up. So if you don't see it where price is currently at, you can always scroll back and see because the more touches, the better. Even on your resistance, that's a good resistance because you see how price came to that line and dropped multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, I want you. I wanted you to like. Uh, uh, I wanted you to spot them out, so I know that you know what you're doing. So click your screen and click on the the um the little cross, the little plus sign at the in the uh, yeah right there. And I want you to spot out where you see the the um where price dropped. So keep scrolling to the left. Oh, you would have to scroll to the left first. So click off of that. Scroll to the left. Okay, right there. Now tell me where you uh see strong touches at. Oh, it took you right back. That's all right, I guess. All right, so tell me why you consider that your resistance line. Cut in, in, be in between there, I feel like the price. So you can just show me, like, show me where you saw price came to that line multiple times. Well, can, can you see this little ball right there? Can you see that? Yeah, but you could just move with your crosshairs. But I see the silver ball, so that's fine. So you could take the crosshairs off then. Take your crosshairs off. Okay, now I see the silver ball, so all right, that'll work. It, it hit right here, it okay. right here, here, here. Awesome. Okay. And then your support. Why did you call that your support? It it hit twice right here, but I, I figure out I, I wouldn't want to go yeah anywhere below that. Okay. If that make makes sense. From my yeah, my, my terms, I guess. All right, so you can keep going to the next steps. I'm just making sure you're understanding what you're doing. That's why I'm asking the questions to see why you like what your analysis of it is and why you chose that. But that's why I said, because there's only two touches, we're not, two touches is not enough. So that's why I said, scroll to the left so that you can see what is going on. So you could keep scrolling to the left, but the more touches, the better. So if you scroll to the left and you see more touches, you that's even better. Yeah. Keep scrolling. Go ahead. Okay, there we go. 
And then you could just count them out as you see them. Um, that was really nothing, but that's okay. Keep going. That one is something right there, that nice wig touch right there. That huge, massive wig was really nice. That, okay. So that's all. You just want to just make sure you had those multiple touches where price reversed. But yeah, that's overall a really good line. So you could go to the next step. I just wanted to make sure why you chose that as your line. Oh, but you moved your line, so fix it. <clears throat> just touch the line. It's not, it's not going back towards beginning. I'm trying to move it over. Come on. Touch the line. I didn't see you touch the line. Yeah, I touched the the line. Yeah, you moved it. You see where you moved it? The, the my my support line. Mm hmm. Yeah. You moved it by mistake. Move. Oh, there's only ten minutes left. But I'll go get back on another session. Oh, take that off. Move your support line back to where it was at. No, you don't have to go there. Mm, don't do that. Just touch your line and move it. Bring it back down. There you go. Touch it and then bring it back down. Okay. Now go to the next step. There's only 10 minutes left, so I want you to do this within this 10 minutes, and then I'll get back on so I can see Marlena mark up her chart. So next I'll be determined where it it don't look like it's at the 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 end though. That that's the yeah, that's that that's was cool. go back to how it was. Just zoom in with your fingers, like bring it in like you were zooming in on so on a picture or something. Okay, now bring it over so we can get to the word prices off. Oh, okay, keep it perfect. So now you could do the next step. We only have eight minutes and 40 seconds left. So what is the next step? Is to go to the daily for an hour and determine the trend rate. Awesome, so now you can write down, uh, now you can do the next step here. So now that you're on the four hour, what is it that you want to do? Just draw my trend line. Okay. Am I, I'm, yeah, I'm using the trend line. Okay. So go to where you want to start it at. Yeah, you always want to start it where you want to start your trend line at. Uh, is there any way I can move this? Yeah, just click it. Click it, yeah. Make sure that the dots are on. Click it again. Okay. And you can move it now. Oh no, I wasn't trying to start it right there. That's all. I was trying to move it, move it. Yeah, you can move it. Draw. Make sure there's a trend. Draw. You can't move it when it's like that. Just yeah, not move it. Okay. But yeah, I'm saying you can move the actual trend line. So don't touch any of the dots. Touch like in the actual line. Okay, like that. So however you want it to put your trend line. Mm. And what makes a valid trend line is two wick touches. If it doesn't have two wick touches, it's not a valid trend line. So draw the trend, whatever trends you're seeing right now, draw those trends. <clears throat> Whatever trends you're seeing right now. Okay. Well, I'm gonna start from over here. Okay. No, not, we don't. When we're looking at where price is currently at, we're not looking that far in the past because price has nothing to do with that right now. We're looking uh, at where price is currently at. Okay. That's way in the past. Like right here. That's fine. Just, right. I just want you to draw a trend to see where you what you are seeing your perspective. Okay. 
So no, that wouldn't actually be a trend at all. Your trend would be starting from the bottom. There's two trends going on here. There's a trend starting from there. Bring your trend line all the way up to the top. So rotate that trend line. Bring it all the way to the top. Okay, perfect. I'm not trying to move. Yeah, I figure. Just, I get what you're doing with that. Just move that down so that it don't get in the way. Yeah, move it down. Perfect. Just leave it right there. Okay, bring it all the way through. No, you don't ever go through candles. Keep going. No. So yeah, this is why we're doing this for practice. So keep bringing it all the way through now. Hold on, not there. Bring it down. And bring it through that black candle on the top, all, all the way at the right. All the way at the right. Now bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Make sure those wicks are touching. Bring it down right there, down that wick, that, those wicks right there. Not that one. The two wicks right there, right there. Perfect. Bring it down to those wicks. Yeah, now keep sending it out. Yeah, keep going. Perfect. Keep going. Keep going. Perfect. Just like that. Great. Now that's a perfect trend line. You don't ever want to go through the candles like how your candle was just going because that's not a trend. You want a valid trend line. So your trend line has two wick touches. So do you see how that first wick touched that all the way at the bottom at that black candle? Yes. And then you see how the wick touched again at the top where the white candle is? Yes. Okay, so this is a valid trend. So now this would have actually been a really, really good sell. So can you bring the screen over to the to right more so we could actually see what's at the rest of the screen? Or does it not let you? Yeah, perfect. Yes. So yeah, extend your trend line up a little more. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. So this would have actually been a really good sell to get into because you saw how there was a nice little uh, trend line there and then it broke. Yeah. So now where do you think that the price, where do you think that the market is going to? It's going down. Yep, going down to where? Was it like around here? Like on this area it's going down to your support yeah so yes going back to your line so go but now you can go to the next step you only have three minutes left so go to the next step i'm gonna put in okay. another link that way we can finish this up but go to the next step so what's the next step just drop to, to the one hour awesome so now you could really really see the trend that's going on here so this was actually perfect Price came all the way up to your resistance line, that red line that you have. It came down and it broke price right here and you could have gotten for the sell. That's a nice sell. So now, what do you want to do now? Is, is your an, another line to, to where I could have, where we're... So now you want to draw another trend line so now so that you can determine where you can enter the market now. So this is now you want to trap price. So draw a trend line to where because we know which way the market wants to go, right? Yes. So which way are we expecting the market to go? Down. Awesome. So draw a trend line to where you're able to see that the prices will be able to break a downtrend. So draw a trend line. So pull up another trend line. This is gonna be your counter trend. You have two minutes left, so let's try to get this. Yeah. Can I start from right here? Well, no. Well, you want price to break down. So you want a trend line to where you're able to see that price breaks the trend line. Where, where's your trend? Where's the trend line that you have? Well, the one, the one I have is right here. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah. So now you could do that. Perfect. Um. <clears throat> so
So you're going to want to bring that trend line all the way up. So bring that trend line all the way up. Not starting from there. Starting from the bottom. No, sorry. Leave it there. Yeah, leave it there. Leave it at the bottom of that wick. And price is never supposed to go through your candles, remember? So you don't you don't want you want it to go, yeah. Bring your bring your trend line up. Like just draw it all the way up, but don't let it go through any candles. Okay. So the first dot should be touching that wick there. And this is gonna the more you practice it, it's gonna make sense. No, you have to have a dot. Make sure the first dot is touching that wick. Okay, like that. Now bring it on up. The other way, the other way, the other way. Keep bringing it, well, just bring it all the way through. Perfect, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Kentora says, always draw your things into the future. Awesome. Now 